Okay, so as you can see, I have it in the box, and <clears throat> I'll get you a little bit of close-ups here so you can see what I'm talking about, why you want to dry fit um, your uh, unit before you um, do any soldering. Sorry about the shakiness. So, so you can see it's a pretty close fit. Um, obviously, there's going to be insulation down first underneath. And then this will lay on top of it, and I'll eventually wrap it with the aluminum, which you'll see all that. I'll do that in later videos, so I'm not going to get into that. Uh, it's very tight fit right along the edge and right on top there. And you can see the last one is the return. I ended up with 16 riser tubes. And the reason why I have this here is these pipes here are going to connect in right here, go through. They'll be stubbed out and ready for a second... Um, collector and you can see there's one up there too that will be hooked on and slid through a hole and they will be insulated temporarily until I, um, I build another one and connect connect up to it and continue the series and of course when I do that this um, this return will be disconnected because it'll come from this one the next panel over it'll go across uh, that manifold into the next collector and then down that return and over into this stub and across um, and out. So again, it'll continue to always come out in this corner over here. So on the edge of my roof, coal will always go in here and my return will always come out here. That makes it easier um, instead of running hoses across your roof and other lines and more things to worry about. Uh, a couple things, obviously there's a whole bunch of different ways you can build these boxes. I've seen all different ways. I don't think there's any right or wrong way. Maybe some are better than others, but I chose to actually just put the 2 by 4s uh, right on the plywood. Uh, I mean, I had it upside down, obviously, screwed down into the 2 by 4s And then I put um, two, these are like 3-inch screws going in uh, the sides. I lost a little bit of space, obviously, on my uh, plywood for my spacing of my riser tubes. I originally wanted 20 riser tubes, but by doing this and going in a little bit and compensating for the return that's going to stay in the box, I end up with 16, which is a lot more than a lot of them I see on YouTube. These are almost exactly 3 inches apart. I originally wanted 2, um, but what I ran into is this. Obviously, I have to have a pipe between all these T's, and that's about as close as I feel comfortable soldering because you know you're going to be getting these hot and you're going to be potentially unsoldering one while you're trying to solder the next. I'm not a soldering expert, but I've done enough that I know that um, could be an issue. Uh, I don't know if they make T's because again, these are three quarter to half inch, three quarter, three quarter, half. I don't know if they make a street T. If um, anybody knows what I'm talking about, it would be three-quarter, half. Uh, this would be the three-quarter that would slide into the um, OD, three-quarter OD, to go inside the three-quarter ID. If you could do that, then you could get these much closer and get more riser tubes. And I'm not a scientist, so I don't know how close you can go or how much more heat I'm going to gain um, by going closer, but I do know that when the aluminum is in here and it is collecting the heat, the shorter the distance that that heat has to travel to get to the pipe, to get to the water inside, uh, the better off you are. Obviously, the further the distance apart, that heat has to travel a lot further to the next um, transfer point because you're just trying to transfer that heat from the sun to the, to the aluminum, uh, the metal, and then to that pipe into the water. So I chose to go as close as I could. This is my first one, so that uh, is what I ended up with. Now these pieces, if anybody's interested, um, by doing it this way, this is a regular 4x8 sheet, sheet of plywood, three 2x4s, um, obviously two up the side and one cut in half and trimmed a little bit for the two ends. And by doing that and cutting these, the pipes in between the two, I think I have one right here. These are two inches. So 
two inches between each one. And that's what gave me my very close um, fit here, which worked out very well. So again, so I have one of these in between each of these tees, all the way across, top and bottom. And um, again, that gives me the 16 riser tubes and room for one three-quarter inch hot water return that comes inside. Now there is a reason why I have this setting up on this here, if anybody's questioning it. Because when I put this together, remember what I said, this is going to be soldered into here. Not this one, it won't be part of this. This will be a continuation of this bottom manifold. If I can get it over there. And it's going to go through the wall. So if I keep all these the same size, they're going to run into each other, the, the same height, they're going to run into each other. So when I solder this one, this, this pipe here up at that end, I'm going to have it raised up a little bit so it'll clear this manifold that'll go underneath of it and out and be prepared to go to the next uh, manifold. Hopefully this isn't too lengthy and long, but I want to do a little bit better job explaining than some of the other ones. Some people do a fantastic job, and I thank them for all the uh, help that it gave me but I wanted to make it so somebody could actually duplicate this if they wanted to and I'm sure somebody will be watching this saying I did it all wrong and of course that's always the case but hey this is gonna work for me so uh, do with it what you'd like so that's what's gonna happen there and then this will come down right over the top of them and again go out the same way uh, and over there of course I just one difference um, the connector is just a uh, half inch to three quarter elbow and you can see my spacing is, is tight I mean there's a little bit of room there because it's just sitting here but that is why you want to definitely dry fit this before you do any soldering now one other note I am going to solder those stubs on before I put this in here that one and the one at this end and what I'm going to do is this whole unit, I'm going to take it, and as I slide it in, I'm going to slide it in starting at this end, this way, and slide those stubs through the hole so they're ready to go. But by doing that, I won't be able to do it on this end here, because obviously you can't slide it through and bend the copper and slide it through. So these ones will have to be put together afterwards, but that's going to eliminate me any soldering um, or as much soldering as possible inside the box with the styrofoam and you know I don't want any melting going on with that. So this here um, will not be soldered because I have um, the pipe that's going to go across here right here actually. This will be eventually in here like this and it'll go out here but of course I can't slide that one in so this will have to be slid in afterwards through the hole over here up to that um, up to this here and I'll have a little bit of play so I'll be able to lift this whole unit up and kind of up away from the insulation I got some fire retardant material I'll put between there and solder this last connection here um, and um, same with this one here I'll have to do the same thing here. This one I won't be able to lift. Um, I'll have to do something a little bit different. I might end up even using a one, one or two shark bite um, connectors. If anybody doesn't know what that is, just look it up. And that will eliminate me doing some soldering really close in here. I don't want to melt my insulation. Okay, I'll take a little pause for now and uh, we'll uh, catch back up with you later.